Hello people, my name is Mohini Day and you're watching my brand new talk show, What a Motherfucker Wants. Now, today I'm going to grab your attention towards something that is extremely important but often people forget. By now, you guys must know that I really like talking about topics on different episodes with different artists. We have spoken about companionship, leadership, musicianship, showmanship, individuality, the inspiration that flows through the changes that we go through in life, and so many other things. Today, we're going to talk about consistency, which is probably one of the most important one in the top three. I'm going to give my take on this, but nothing better than asking one of the most incredible musicians that I know and have worked with. Today, I have a very, very special guest on my show who has worked in the music industry for the past 31 years and has worked with some of the most renowned artists such as John McLaughlin, Ernie Watts, Pandit Shiv Kumar Sharma, Pandit Hari Prasad Chaurasi, Ashankar Asan Lai, Kumar Bose, and many, many more. The list just goes on. <laughs> I've been working with him since I was 16. And not to forget, he's also the curator of Udupa Music Festival, bringing the best from all over the world. He is also the founder and director of the Udupa Foundation, a charitable trust founded in 2015. So please welcome the amazing Giridhar Udupa. Hi. Yay. Hello. <laughs> Awesome. I'm so happy to have you. Same here, same here. So firstly, uh, how are you? Yes, I'm good. I'm still good after this uh, yeah, I think two months of lockdown. Up? I know. How are you coping up with this COVID-19 situation? Uh, well, uh, uh, it's for the last two months, it's uh, everyone are locked down. And uh, right. uh, I, I'm actually kind of, uh, so far, I'm enjoying for so many reasons because uh, I'm at home with a family that's a that's a plus plus, a plus, a plus point. And also we try to discover ourselves and try to evolve ourselves musically you know so practice practicing has been there but still you can yeah. think what this you, is the what, creative uh, uh, side which opens up no this this so time is that yeah. and you know imagine when you get up in the morning we, okay what do you have to do today nothing there's nothing to do. Yeah. That's the best part. The mind is so relaxed. It's yeah. fresh. And but do you miss that push? Do you miss learning songs? Do you miss that, uh, you know? No, that is very much there. I miss playing live concert. That's the most, yeah. you know, that's where we get the energy. Yeah. The most important when you play the live concert, the, the positivity, the energy we get, that's, you know, we, we take it and we'll yeah. use it for our life, you know, to get practice. It, uh, to do something at home everything is coming from the live concert the energy that is i'm missing a uh, missing a lot but it's a good time to you know reboot the reset the whole machine and try to right, do something right, new. Right. i, I hope this situation yeah. settles down as soon as possible I, I, so as we as can play possible. together again yes, yes. Missing, yeah. like you said everybody's missing playing live so badly oh my god yeah. we being in bangalore we still can't play together in person exactly you know <laughs> it's, it's just you can yeah Okay, so my first question to you is, what is mm -hmm. consistency to you and how much weight does it hold in our foundation and professionalism? Uh, consistency is definitely, it's, uh, you know, uh, when it comes to playing, when it comes to practice, I think we need to have the consistency uh, throughout our life. And uh, uh, come again, what did you, what, did, what was the next thing? Consistency? Uh, how does it, uh, how much impact does it make in our foundation? How important it is to be there in our foundation and in our professionalism? Because consistency can be of different types now, like say in our practice and then uh, whatever we deliver or deliver of our caliber out of our capacity when we are working for directors, artists and stuff. If we set the expectations higher at first only, then we have to keep up. If you can't keep up, then the consistency is lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. So, so to start with the consistency, I think uh, it starts with the, the the basic foundation with respect to the practicing. You know, uh, yeah. we have to. There are many levels of practicing. Okay, I basically I when I was young, I started playing when I was like four because my father is a musician. So whenever right. he used to teach to his students, I used to sit beside him and I used to watch him playing, and I, I was to see. Okay, maybe I should practice this way or that way. The consistency is. Is it has to, it has to be there yeah. from the beginning, and everything is happening thanks to my father. He has been my uh, backbone throughout my life. So he's been teaching me how to uh, lead a life and how to uh, focus musically or how to practice 
so that is that's it and uh, uh, we need we as a professional musician and playing with anybody uh, the discipline is must that's what i believe in you know the, Very true. the consistency when it, when it uh, with respect to the discipline is it it's must so that's so what important. i believe so important yeah. and i think consistency comes in so many different forms as well um like you said uh, it comes uh, you need to be consistent with your practice you need to be consistent uh with your um, you know uh, deliverance you need to be consistent with your so many other things your outlook the way you talk to people if anything goes even off, the attitude you know attitude, attitude you know? yeah most important that's what i thought to me the most important is the right attitude you know yeah so if you have you should have a right attitude imagine you coming you, no matter what a big musician or great musician you know if you have a bad attitude hey man come on what is this what's happening and if you start <laughs> blanking the energy goes down correct right? correct, so correct. being positivity and i feel like uh, and i feel like even if you have the attitude be consistent with it <laughs> exactly you know that you know? consistent we we are tuned to that kind of attitude yeah exactly don't then we, we know that way. yeah <laughs> at least we are aware yeah and it'll be positive that's what be positive and have fun man this is life is all about having fun right sharing yeah, the happiness absolutely. that's what i believe in Great so enough. be consistent in the consist Good. Good. Yeah. Now I'm curious. Since we've never spoken about this ever, we've always just played and joked around, right? Yes. So yes. <laughs> me interviewing this is a little, little bit surreal. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. For <laughs> me, it's like you know, I if uh, it's uh, playing with you or you know, if you give me some songs, okay, it's it's kind of it's easy. Now yeah. you're doing interview is kind of okay. <laughs> that's that's how it's gonna be. Different. So I'm really bit, looking for it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. um i have always wanted to know now i know your father is a gatam player but who were mridanga you playing mridanga, mridanga player yes oh, yes that? i started well i started uh, playing mridanga initially oh. uh, it's this small in, interesting story i can share it with you like yeah. when i was 9 years old my father organized a concert close to my place mm-hmm. it was a carnatic classical music concert he asked his one of his uh, senior students to play mridanga huh. and somehow he thought even i wanted to be Uh, I wanted to be part of that concert since there was already a murdangam. So mm. I was I've been playing murdangam till then. So he said, "Why don't you play gatam?" I said, "I don't know how to play gatam." Of course, the murdangam, gatam, all belongs to the same family. family. Of me, yeah. it's South Indian percussion instrument. The lessons, everything is same. The playing technique is different. He said, "Okay, I'm going to teach you few uh, technique." So he taught me one month some technique in the gatam, and I played that concert. And after that, he just said, "Okay, from today." you just continue with the gatam so it <laughs> so just your like dad that. was like you will do this now you have to do this <laughs> that's it that's it you pack up pack up murdangam then i picked up my gatam and i started playing gatam throughout my life and from then till now i've been playing gatam for wow. yeah what were you asking you were asking about uh, my father yeah yeah so i just was wondering that how did you happen to pick up gatam all of uh, oh. out of all the other instruments yeah, you know so your dad actually. told you you kind of answered exactly. yeah it. uh, yeah so yeah, it's, it's not that i picked it up my father uh, in fact uh, his blessing that he just uh, he found something you know after the concert yeah he must have seen that you know? in you because yeah because i for, uh, at 9 i i don't think i would uh, i would uh, that was uh, able to make any decision okay i can play right. mudanga mar kada i was not the age yeah. to make any same, same thing right like so i i always wanted to become a fashion designer and my dad was like no no you have to uh, play the bass only because i see fire in you <laughs> you are a fashion designer even now so <laughs> Yeah, I and continued that page. on the side. I continued only that. for yourself. Only for yourself. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, yeah. Oh my God. But did you never think about picking up another instrument after you started playing the gatam? Did you not think about playing any other instrument ever? No. Um, the basically uh, for a classical music, I always believed in sticking to one percussion instrument. You know, okay. because one instrument it takes so much of time and effort to you know uh, mm-hmm. to make it. Uh, Uh, sound better the whole you know the, to right. learn the 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 uh, the finest uh, finger the technique so every get details yeah it takes yeah. it takes one, one whole life to do it right yeah it's a so language I'll, it's like you need to learn all the alphabets and stuff yeah. classical music whether it's carnatic or hindustani i play uh, only gatam but for different genres could be like uh, world music or jazz or flamenco i play different percussion instrument like uh, more singing kanjara i do kono ko yeah yeah that's amazing at what age did you know that you want to do this professionally like you want to play ghatam and be like the main course uh, ghatam player 
uh well uh, when i was in um, school days i was to play concerts right so mm. uh, probably when i was when i entered my college days mm. i mean i was so sure that i will i'll be a musician you know so just just for the sake of uh, uh maybe society i can call i wanted to i did my graduation in commerce that's okay, it yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, after, in my college days i was so sure that you know so how old were you then when you knew that okay i want to do this professionally 15 years 15 14 15 i guess oh wow that is quite 15, young to yeah, 15, know yeah. that okay i want to do this professionally yes yeah, 15 15 16 yeah 15. wow yeah. amazing what was that first big thing that happened to you in your life uh yeah, yeah so many big things to start with uh, uh november 24 2001 Wow! <laughs> I played. Uh, no, I remember all most oh of the dates. Oh my bait. God! I know how how uh, um, serious you are with remembering dates and everything. I know <laughs> on your laptop you have like every date written and all that. Yeah, exactly. Every I mean, concert folder date. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How? I mean, did they tell you that? Of course. Yeah. Oh, you know that? Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, so 2001, uh, 24th of November, I played for the very first time with my. one of the greatest violin brothers that is mysur brothers vidwan mysur nagaraj and vidwan mysur manjinath i ah. played uh, with them for the very first time so that was kind of breaking point in my life from then i started playing with uh, many other musicians like uh, i then in the same year now the next year coming year i played with dr el subramaniam sir carnadi concert then it started the journey started everybody many like, doors you know, started opening many doors exactly yeah So you consider every collaboration that you've had so far is has been the biggest like door that opened for you. Yes, 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 yes. I mean, you know, basically playing with especially the classical musicians. I feel Carnatic musicians, you know, which yeah, is so my main point. It's, wow. it's so much informative, yeah. And also, we learn a lot of things, not just on stage, even off stage. Being with these oh great God. masters, whenever yeah. we do with them, you know, the way they lead their life, it really you know helps us to evolve. and uh, to lead progress. it yeah progress in musical even in the off stage and on st- everything you know so wow so when you knew that uh, you want to do this professionally did you think that okay this is something that i want to do in life like this is one goal that i have to accomplish did you have any goals set for you i uh, throughout my life even now i have goals that's the best part of uh, i think in any musicians you know we always wow, really? set goals i mean i from the uh, uh, i started i used to make a list of musicians whom i wanted to play whom i should play you know and when i play with them i would write the date and the month and the you know where everything i would wow. do so throughout for example uh, the two of the greatest uh, south indian percussion player mrudangam player when i played umayalpuram shivaraman sir i think 2006 14th of jan so mm. you know i would never forget those that concert and again i badly wanted to play with one the greatest of the greatest murugan player guru kare kudi mani you know kare yes, kudi mani yes, sir yes of course so you know Love so you know, 1997 uh, 1996 i heard him uh, playing for the very first time uh, in bangalore and almost it took 20 years to play at the same venue i played with him uh, you know for wow. the first very first time you know i think 2015 in 2nd of september so so wow. so you record <laughs> everything like from the day one uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. from the, the time you started performing i can tell you how many concerts have we played to, how many concerts we have played together everything you know everything is in excel now so it's wow, easy to wow i also in your book yeah of course yes of course we have played <laughs> many concerts right? so we have played uh, many concerts so all the concerts like i i recorded and oh put it in the excel it's good yeah, fun you know it's I, i actually i was thinking that i was the only person or kind of thing but many musicians mainly in carnatic musicians they have been doing it for years so what recording yeah recording like uh, not like where they played from their since like how many yeah. uh, so no, like recording all... the dates in their book yes exactly yes yes yeah. they've been doing it for a long time yeah wow <laughs> that's amazing so now we've played together like you said so many times and i've seen you playing you have this amazing sense of power and energy that you uh, have when you're soloing or say even playing with the songs um, and your stamina is incredible especially being a ghatta player with so much energy and stamina it's just crazy like i see you all the time and i i've tried playing the ghatta also you know remember when i was 
yeah, 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 yeah. around with your instrument. I was trying yes. to, oh my God, my, my, my palms just swole, you know, it became, it just started becoming red. And uh, so I've always wondered that, uh, do you do certain things to keep up your stamina? Uh, nothing much. See, basically, uh, by God's grace, the stamina, when, you know, we, we are used to playing three, four hours of a concert without any break, like in mm. a classical music. So not uh, from my engage, I've been playing like uh, nonstop. Uh, uh, one of the most important things is uh, being a classical musician. From the uh, initial days, the training itself in a, will take in a different uh, level. Okay, I mean I'm sure every musician plays for hours together, right? Yes. You you would have played like few hours, five, six, eight hours every day. So we are yeah. also to that kind of a, um, a practice uh, sessions in, in from the day one, from the initial days. And the most important thing is uh, our concerts, if you take a duration, okay, it's mm -hmm. something uh, we don't see not in, in, a, in a Western music, probably. I don't know. We, we used to play sometimes four, four and a half hours of mm -hmm. nonstop. There's no break. So that gives me the stamina. And uh, uh, this instrument, Gatam, uh, I don't know, not many people know the weight is, it's not like a regular clay pot. The yeah. weight is anywhere between six to twelve kgs. As you, as right. you mentioned, it's difficult to get the sound. It's difficult right? to get it's the sound. Difficult yeah. to get. But as uh, pr as we practice, as we you know the, do the riyas, I yes, think it, yeah. it, I think uh, it's it's a. I don't do anything extra. To be honest, I don't do anything mm. extra. It's I thought you work. Normal. I thought you work out and all that. <laughs> oh, no, work out nothing. I don't think I'm. I'm. <laughs> You're I'm naturally fit. Like, fit. It's a natural fit. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> there's something like, you know, yoga or meditation. I mean, meditation is something when you practice that itself is meditation. Imagine right. there is one thing like uh, we have something like Tarikita. Okay. Huh, huh. I play Tarikita in a metronome. I keep it maybe 100 or 120. And hmm. I practice for one hour, just one Tarikita. Tarikita, Tarikita, Tarikita. It's so boring, right? <laughs> it's so boring just to play yeah. one note Tarikita for one hour. But huh. Here, there are many things is there. One, this kind of our concentration will improve, our stamina will improve, and it's nothing but like you know focus at one point. And also, the feel. I it's think like, the more you play, the more you start feeling the groove as well. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. I don't do any much. It's for the stamina. I eat but. a lot. I eat a lot. <laughs> well, I also eat, but uh, it's uh, I don't eat as much as you. <laughs> <laughs> I know how much Thank you mean. for letting my listeners know that. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. And I'm a carnivore, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that. You know, I made oh, a God. picture that when you, uh, when we were in Dubai, I think in the break, uh, breakfast or lunch, something you had just, you had taken idli, if I remember. Idli, or something. Yeah, idli with like uh, chicken curry. Is something you know, I made a video of that. It's something, uh, no, no, never... no, not chicken curry, sorry, idli and uh, coconut chutney. Coconut chutney, exactly. Yeah, yeah. it's vegetarian only what you were yeah. having because there was, was nothing shocked. else. Yeah, I was so shocked to see that you were having idli and chutney, and uh, that was a picture moment. So I made a movie <laughs> and have it. that happens it's once in a lifetime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Achha. You know, sometimes uh, musicians get carried away by the pressure, sometimes how people are going to take it. Um, do you uh, feel any kind of pressure on how people are going to take, say, for example, you just made a song and you put it out. Do you get carried away by how people are going to react? Like, say, for example, after you put out the song, people say like, oh, they didn't accept it. They didn't get satisfied. But you are happy. Is that what? matters to you yes yes 100 percent. you know of course we are there to uh for the audience of whatever we do they have to be happy whether it's live concert or we put it any single yeah. but ultimately bottom line is if i'm happy like you know wow. sincerely if i've done the job yeah. okay if sounding wise even the uh whatever i've done that the work if i've done sincerely and if i feel happy i think that's for yeah. sure it will convey the message will convey mm. and the people will take it in the, the same spirit that's what i believe in that's what has mm. happened to my life throughout the years whether any, it could be yeah yeah before uh, when i used to uh, perform and say if i would do things certain things if i want to approach or change my approach and i want to do certain things uh, it would make me feel good uh, it would make me feel happy but at the same time if i do those things 
people sometimes are not satisfied with it right and it will yeah. push me away you know exactly. so over the time yeah if it is something some some of if there is any uh, people are saying something maybe i should do this i should do it something something nice definitely i will take it in the right spirit mm. right all of us we take it right. in the right spirit if you want to change anything if you want to improve anything i mean mm. if something is if i see that maybe you should have done like this i'll take it in the, in the right mm. way maybe yeah yeah change to we the next as musicians, so we discuss everything we whatever sounds people. the best yeah and there are people we can see it, it is impossible to please all the 100 all of, 100 people, people, yeah, all of this right Absolutely. out of 100 at least 90 people will say yes 10 people you know they have to say no because they should they cannot say yes that's it so right right right, right. yeah a lot of uh, uh, people who um, are just going forward to make songs a lot of song writers they always keep in mind that you know uh, oh this part will not be taken positively uh, by the audience by the audience that we have today uh, so when you're making songs um or when you are uh, designing your solos uh do you keep that in mind um that okay i have to do something that uh makes people happy and um, just keeping in mind people's wants like does that is that yeah, yeah. a kind of a pressure like does and that pressure right no no i no no definitely it's not uh, i don't think that's a pressure for me at all mm. see definitely i keep i would say and i can say that 75% to 80% i keep in my mind the audience only i think ah. more, that's how it should otherwise you can better sit at home and practice and do whatever right. whatever you want to play you can just play see right. and few things uh, uh, what if you if you think if i think that what i'm doing right and whatever sounds it good i think mm. the people will also accept that's what i believe in that's what right. it, it works for me you know always it works for me That's, always it works for yeah for so. some people it doesn't work some oh. you know sometimes what happens is my right will not be your right your right will not be my right or yeah, my yeah, wrong yeah. will not be your wrong you know yeah, yeah, yeah. so it yeah, always yeah. some oh, always but uh, mostly in big bands or um, even sometimes smaller bands actually uh, your likings will not be liked by other people And yeah that is there of course yeah when we are in a band it's a different situation right yeah. because it, yeah. like we need to uh, respect yeah. others uh, Uh, taste or the other yes, yeah, yes, it's, yes, it's yes. we have to yeah. come to a middle ground compromise yeah I mean, especially in yeah, those kinetic setups when uh, we come together and we have no rehearsals and we just play yeah, yeah, yeah. for it yeah 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 definitely definitely true yeah, true, true. yeah. Right. yeah. Hmm. now everybody is trying to copy everyone to sound like someone right <laughs> you know that uh, we've talked about this so many times i guess people do that because they feel like they don't have their own sound they don't feel like they have their own voice you know uh, um how do you think one can <laughs> hi hello Sorry. how do you think one can find their own sound uh see the copying is something we everyone does it like it's not few people say it copy but i say it as inspiration hmm. so i try to take inspiration from every musician not just a gutter player correct, correct so i take if i'm playing with a drummer i take the inspiration i take for inspiration from you so mm. it's just the inspiration number 1 to to right, to, right, right. to start with and the uh, there's nothing in uh, copying it but ultimately mm. if you want to find yourself as like be a musician you have to develop your own things your own stuff yeah your own tonality as you uh, realize this thing in your life i think that will help him as a grow as a musician you know correct, if correct. you keep it we can as well listen to that musician right if if i'm playing with same like uh, someone else yeah first step People is always to... i remember uncle louis told me once that you know yeah. first step is copying and then second yeah. is understanding and studying what is going on there why it has been done that. then yeah. third yeah. step is modifying making it your own and then fourth step is apply your ideas and completely forget yeah. what you just learned about you know? it exactly the four steps exactly you know yeah you can uh, uh, do this i think as as soon as we can uh, get this point in our life as soon as possible then we grow as a yeah. baby musician yeah i think some people get stuck at just copying because then they feel oh. like no, no, that's no. it you that's know not that's yeah. not right they feel Nobody like they can play then <laughs> yeah i mean people will go back to the people who are his copying now let they will go back to the yeah that's when people start saying why should we come oh, to the why should i hear yeah then people will say that yeah you yeah. are uh, copying yeah yeah Okay. Hello. 
what happened oh. <laughs> she ate it's in grew it is in grew perfect grew wow <laughs> <laughs> what you thought huh even the uh, chicken here in grew my dogs nice. are also musicians yeah 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 oh god okay uh, we are towards the end of our questions now um are there any rules in music that one should follow yes uh, the rules are kind of you know one is the discipline mm there had to be discipline the, the the whether it comes to uh, keeping the time okay right. and the, and they should do the homework yes that's most important right. okay here i have to say something what you inspired me uh, you know the incident happened last year i don't think i have shared this with you before i think oh. this is something amazing i never uh, heard all this while like whatever happened the incident and i i have to say that i have told that incident to many 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 musicians uh, after that incident basically if you I mean thing is if you remember that italy concert which is uh. this in october september yeah september september. Yeah, september september end of september right generally when you have a gig we'll have rehearsal a week before or two weeks before or a one month before right right and here you you were you were uh, you were not there in the country for about 4 months because you were in japan correct right yeah so look at the commitment you had see you made like you know we flew to mumbai right. in april that is like may june july august after 5 months before the gig 5 months before the gig two yeah. days we did the rehearsal for a concert which is like 5 months after the rehearsal yes. date yeah i never heard something like this it's, it's <laughs> see this is the best part you know we all should learn from each other like this is the yeah because you know, see I, i have so much respect for all of you guys cuz you guys have played a very important part in my life as well and just like you said i've inspired you in some way you guys have always inspired me from day one from the time i met you you know and i've always learned all these little little things that i saw growing up with you guys i met you what when i was probably 15 or 16 yeah 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 ha yeah. huh. yeah. and from that time now if we compare it's like so different we have evolved as people we have evolved as musicians definitely definitely we're learning definitely. every day yeah yeah yeah, yeah. basically Ooh. but from each other exactly yeah i mean this is this is what i learned from you because we all we all know that you are a fantastic musician but something like this the 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 professionalism the discipline you know you it's something i had to like i picked it up and i'll use that throughout my life you know of course we always do we rehearsal but i don't think i would have planned in that much you know five months in advance some kind of rehearsal and you know yeah. i would have done something maybe like uh, share the songs through then maybe we would have chatted in uh, some like video what would have happened yeah, oh yeah. My God. <laughs> that's, that's something yeah. you know so yeah, yeah. Yeah I feel like everybody should dedicate and uh, invest themselves completely into something that they really want to do properly you know otherwise yeah, yeah, yeah. don't waste your time otherwise just get exactly. away yeah exactly exactly um, this is this is it you know and uh, have the right attitude you know the, be positive be good be happy what you were doing share 100% all, all 200% that's yeah a, that, that is what important in life you know of course everybody can play good everybody can play faster everything is good right yeah. but should have the the good positive energy the positive and again consistency happiness. kicks in here right? exactly see the being you happy you have right? to be consistent consistent yeah. in being dedicated towards your music and your yeah, yeah, yeah. work it can be music yeah, exactly. it can be you as a chef make good food every day True. improvise True. you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. that's what i believe in that's what my always say music is happiness the more you share the more it is you know Absolutely. that's what i believe perfectly i totally agree amazing so you know this question now my next question is has, has been picked up from one of uh, your videos on youtube channel um how did you work on your speed was that something you never paid attention to or is it something that you worked on what what how did i pick how, how did you how did you work on your speed speed ah okay yeah. was this it is, something uh, that you paid attention to and worked on or is it something that you never paid attention to no of course uh, speed is something we have to work on we it won't come just as it is right mm-hmm. so as i said 
I think in this interview only I told you one small little thing incident how I practice. Yeah. If I take one word, thari kita, for example, mm. thari kita, thari kita. Doing that for an hour. So I I used to start with a seventy two, for example. Okay, seventy two metronome. So I used to play same thari kita for an hour or couple of hours. Then next day, I change it to I add uh, two more thing. I'll make it seventy four. Okay, mm. and I play for same one hour or two hours. This is how I practice even now. Wow. This is how we can improve the, our uh, speed, right? So you know, when I when I come, okay, imagine if I want to play in thari uh, kita in one eighty. Now mm -hmm. it's it it's not that easy. Like it is possible, but I cannot mm -hmm. play for one hour for sure. But imagine <laughs> play every day uh, for an hour thari kita so starting from seventy two. Keep adding seventy four, seventy six, hundred percent on the whatever like. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, Uh, 70s, 80s, maybe on 50th day or 54th uh, day. Okay, you yeah. achieve uh, 180th uh, tempo. So this is a yeah. speed. So we, I mean, I practice even now. So that's a wow. Everybody's journey is so different. In in my case, I never really worked on speed at all. Like I always worked on my technique. Okay. I always worked on harmonic theory, and I always worked on uh, my slap techniques, finger techniques, and just to be more lyrical every time. Because uh, as oh. a bass player, I'm a part of not only a rhythm section but also the melodic section, right? Yeah. So I have to complement both the sides and not be biased towards just the rhythm section. Although I so badly want to be, like I wish I was a drummer, you know? Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. you know, I love. Playing the bass like I'm drumming on the bass, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. Uh, I love doing everything that you do on the ghatam or uh, anybody playing tabla, anybody playing khanjira, or even on the morsing. I would, I love doing all those things on the bass, and I love figuring <laughs> out ways to do that. You, also. you've been, you've been doing amazing because I know the, the you picked up the kano kol, for example. Yeah. And you singing and you, you can play all our Carnatic stuffs on the bass guitar. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I really love doing that, and that's why in my case, I think doing, uh, going through that path, it kind of subconsciously, it just, I, I never worked on it like I said on my speed, but while I was on that journey, it just happened. It just naturally can, happened. And playing yeah, yeah. with fast musicians like you, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rajesh, you know, on the mandolin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, all these musicians, they have like such fast numbers, and practicing those, it just yeah. happened i don't play speed all all the time huh? i also play soft relaxed <laughs> groove also okay of course of course you are a groover takket itakke jinno takket itakke jinno takket din din you are a groover you are a funky groover yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah totally totally amazing so we are on the last question now and then we'll play yeah. our small rapid fire round um this is also from one of our videos one of our videos actually you know that bangalore utsav uh, of course how can i forget this mo yeah should pala yeah yeah. yeah so yeah uh how did you hear of me how did you get to know about when was the first time you heard of me heard about me uh well uh, i think uh, Bala Baskar is one of I think he was the one uh, I was telling me about uh, you in one of the concert with because I used to play with Bala for that was not the first the, concert we did no, no, that was, we no, played no, no, before no. before before I think we the first time we played sometime in 2013 if I remember with uh, Prasanna really uh, I think oh so, that yeah. was the first time yeah I think I think so of course then later on we went to Dubai. With Stephen, Stephen you, Gino, yeah. all those things. Yeah. I think that is the 2013. I don't remember the date, but yeah, that was the time. But uh, before that, I have heard, you know, like before that, uh, some musician from, uh, 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 of course, Bala, uh, not Stephen for sure. Uh, mm. I don't remember exactly where, who who was telling, but right, Bala right. was the one who was, uh, you know, telling me about Are you. Are you the yeah. kind of person who keeps an eye out for musicians online, like always looking out for like? Or it just not whenever really. comes out, comes not out. Really, yeah. Whatever comes in, I just take it. Like you know, yeah. I don't want like yeah, yeah. Right. I keep hearing because if you say somebody, for example, okay, yeah, yeah. so then I'll 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 start right. looking for them. So we talk and then we get to know. Yeah, it, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I loved what you did. The last uh, thing that you posted, that uh, I that amazing bowl you posted on Instagram, the long one. Oof. Which one? The or two different cycles? You mean? 
Yes, 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 yes. Seven Same here thing. and five here. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. Amazing. Too good. I love yeah. it. Thank yeah. You, thank you. Okay. We're on to the rapid fire. So oh. first question to you is, if you could yeah. switch to any other instrument, what would it be? It can't be any rhythmic instrument. It has to be a melodic instrument. Violin. <laughs> what violin? Yes, really? I just love that instrument. If I had, uh, wow. you know, uh, that's it's. I would have picked up the violin for sure. Crazy, that's interesting. Yeah. I I didn't know yeah. that. I thought you would yeah. say something like uh, guitar or something. Uh, maybe, but uh, but you're more I mean, inclined always, to violin. Yeah. You know, that's why I in all is my years years of playing. I mo I end up playing. Mostly with our tour with musicians for the Carnatic violin players, you know, ah, from okay. Kumareshana, Ganeshana to Mysore yeah, Brothers, or with yeah. El Subramanian. So yeah, all these, all my my favorite instruments. You know. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, what annoys you the most? Oh, annoys. <laughs> I think the bad attitude. You know, someone bad has a bad yeah. attitude or. Some yeah. uh, someone no likes, for example, value for no respect. Uh, yeah, exactly, you know, the, yeah. if they don't respect elders, especially, I I hate, I don't like it. I hate it. I don't like it at all. We, we have, have to respect that. elders. We yeah. have to respect elders. You know, that's our okay. culture. You know? We have to sure, respect yes, them. Yes, yeah. Yes. Okay. Tell us something personal that the whole world don't know about you. <laughs> I know. I remember you asked this Gino, and he said uh, washing dishes, right? <laughs> So, well, Gino, I don't wash dishes at all. I have done maybe three, what four times in this lockdown period. What lockdown is your period. No, I have washed actually. To be honest, I have washed in this lockdown but period. But he yes, loves doing that. Dishes. He likes. Doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he likes doing it. But I have no other option, so I was doing it. I didn't, okay. Uh, uh huh. What? Come again? What was the question? Sorry. So tell, <laughs> what? tell us something personal. Oh that yeah, personal. Yeah. Whole world don't know about you. I sleep a lot. <laughs> uh, few of them know, you know. Few of them know, but yeah, that you know, e given a chance, you know, I can sleep at any place at any moment. Even if there's a heavy rock concert, I'm not kidding. I'm not joking. <laughs> I can just met any. I'm not joking. I've slept <laughs> even even a some uh, heavy concert. I've slept sitting in the front like a few rows. Oh my God! I just take. I can sleep at any point at any place. I can sleep, and I have to say that you know, my record sleep. I'm not joking. Huh? It's 15 hours, 45 minutes, or close to 16 hours. What? I'm not joking. Yes, I slept at 3:45, some uh, 3:15, 3:15, and I got up around seven o'clock in the morning, 3:45 in the afternoon, thinking that you know it was in south of France. I was so tired of journey ah, and all. That's why. Uh, that's why, of course, not just uh, like. <laughs> yeah, I was like, whoa, how, how? <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Okay, describe yourself in four words. Simple, hardworking, uh, trying to be more disciplined person, very naughty. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I can totally relate. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is the last one. Yeah. What is the worst compliment you have received so far? Worst compliment. Hmm. <laughs> you know, something like this could maybe like you know, after uh, <laughs> uh, like three hours of concert, huh. you know, someone told me and said, "Fantastic, sir. Yeah, thank you. Your hairstyle is fantastic, sir. I mean, like, come <laughs> on, you, but I'm like you know, after the." Whole, of thing he said i uh, thought you uh, would say uh, remember in dubai we played and uh, when you were soloing this guy was so drunk he came towards you and he was like uh, this uh -huh. that he was showing you talam and you were like engrossed into your soloing and you were trying not to look at this person yeah, yeah. I, think, I remember yeah, that, yeah. and i think after you finished your solo he said something he i think uh, told you to play some song or something <laughs> oh yeah someone yes i remember you know it, it's people think this is a rhythm instrument i cannot play some uh, uh, bollywood song on the gatan like yeah, you cannot right. play yeah, gatan, yeah right? and he asked for some song he asked yeah. to, yes exactly yeah that's what i'm saying yeah <laughs> and Steven and i were laughing 
what is this how can i play you know maybe if i have uh, eight yeah. uh, gatam i could do a gatam no, karan i could do. not answered you should have given given him one more glass of is yeah. whatever he was drinking he was yeah. thinking uh, yeah yeah okay wonderful we are done with our interview i'm so happy Super. to have you on the show it was lovely thank talking you. to you thank you and much. i hope you enjoyed too fantastic it was Once amazing again. time you know because we've been talking like uh, so many other things but uh, this is something amazing i was able to share so many things i hope you yes. enjoyed yeah thank i you. enjoyed a lot i love talking to you you know that yes i know of course thank you very much for having me in this amazing my honor. talk my honor thank my you very honor. much